Hello, Shikhati Vandura. Assalamu alaikum. Hope you people are doing very well at this moment. So today, we'll be talking about, it's all about higher study in New Zealand. There are a lot of students are always asking us question on Facebook, on our WhatsApp, and on our email, and by making phone call. So there are a lot of questions that come in every day. So after a long while, we make a plan to go for a Facebook live session with one of our top ranking world-class comprehensive public university based in New Zealand. So Priya Shikhati Bandura, Ajke Amra Amadir Facebook live session and Kotha Bulbo is all about higher study in New Zealand. So New Zealand day, after a year, Uchu Shikhat Juno Jethi Chachchen, you people are most welcome to come and talk to us. And uh, we people all are here to give you all kind of information. I believe you enjoy your eat and end of holy Ramadan. So you people are safe and having quality time with your family. And I believe you people will enjoy this Facebook live session. And I'm welcoming all of our students and the guardian to join our Facebook live session and ask as many questions as you are looking for. Please don't forget to mention all of your academic information in here because on the basis of your all academic information, we'll be only able to give you the accurate, transparent and crystal clear answer. I believe you, you will be enjoying this Facebook live session. So I'll be welcoming to Andhra. Hello, good afternoon, Andhra. How are you today? Hi, good afternoon, Monsieur. How are you? I'm very fine and thank you very much uh, for being with us this lovely Facebook live session. Uh, there are a lot of people are watching us this Facebook live session, so I'll be requesting you, could you please introduce about yourself? Then we'll be going for a lot of questions because students are very excited to know more about the New Zealand. Uh, so for this Facebook live session, we'll be talking about why students should consider New Zealand as of their future study destination, number one. Then we'll be talking about like, there are a lot of university in entire New Zealand and uh, why students should consider Victoria University of Wellington and uh, what are the popular programs that you are offering currently at this moment. We'll be talking about the ranking stuff and uh, we'll be talking about the responsibilities taken by the Victoria University of the Wellington due to the COVID-19 situation. So what is your planning for the upcoming intake? Do you running the online session or it's gonna be on campus? How does it work? And the ranking and the employability opportunity and the student working right during their study period. So I'll be talking about sometime in Bengali, sometime in English, due to the lot of our students' parents, they are watching us different part of the countryside. So to make their life more easy and convenient, I will be translating. So, uh, Andrea, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you. It's it's lovely to be here with you. Thank you very much. So can you please tell me, Andrea, a little bit more about you and your university place and the location? Sure. So my name is Andrea McLeod Kareem, and I'm the International Regional Manager for Victoria University of Wellington. I look after the regions of South Asia and the Middle East. So Bangladesh is definitely one of my territories. I had visited earlier this year in January, and I do hope to be back again one day soon uh, once everybody, everything has cleared up and uh, we are once again able to travel. So first I'd like to wish everybody a uh, very happy Id Mubarak. I hope you had a lovely time celebrating on... Uh, did you celebrate on Monday or Sunday in Bangladesh? Yes. yes. Yeah, we... we yeah. yeah. So I'm actually based in Mumbai in India, so not too far away from you. Just a few hours flight, half an hour yeah. in terms of the time zone. So it's yeah. very easy for the students, the parents and the agents to get in touch with me for any queries or assistance. Now, a little bit of background information about Victoria University of Wellington. We are located in the capital city of New Zealand, Wellington. It is the second most populated city in New Zealand, about 500,000 people. So um, by Bangladeshi standards, that might sound like a small city, but it does feel like a big one once you're there because of how much is going on. 
It is where all of the government offices are based. It has a very booming IT sector. It also has a very vibrant creative sector as well. It's been rated the uh, top place to live in the world two years running by Deutsche Bank, also yeah. called yeah. the best place to visit in New Zealand by Lonely Planet and the coolest little capital in the world. So yeah. apart from being a fantastic study destination, it's also a great place to live and work as well. Thank you very much. So, Laura, if I come back to you, could you please tell me a little bit more about because there's a lot of country in this beautiful world, including the USA, Australia, United Kingdom, Canada. But why students should consider New Zealand as of the future study destination place, or how to make the international student difference to studying in New Zealand? All right. So I think New Zealand is seen as a very up and coming destination for international students, particularly within the South Asian region. It has been growing in popularity in the previous few years. We are uh, ranked as the safest English speaking country in the world at present. Um, and New Zealand, what you can look for when you're going for your bachelor's study or for your postgraduate study in New Zealand is that you will be given skills to prepare you for the future alongside the knowledge that you gain through your studies. So New Zealand has been ranked as number one in the world for preparing students for the future by The Economist. So you know that when you come, it won't just be about, uh, you know, being given information, being expected to repeat it back. It's about your own critical thinking. It's about creativity. It's about learning teamwork and problem solving, the types of transferable soft skills that employers are looking for in their employees when you finish. New Zealand qualifications are globally recognised. So whether you plan to stay back in New Zealand, to return to Bangladesh, to go anywhere else in the world that you have work opportunities, your qualification will be recognised and respected. We have eight universities. They are all ranked in the top two, three percent worldwide. My university is in the top two percent worldwide. Yes. And we are all publicly funded universities. We don't have any private universities in New Zealand. So you know that there's a very high quality of teaching and learning in New Zealand. Yes. I think yes. Uh, it's important to note also that we were the first country in the world to introduce a code of practice for pastoral care of international students, which means yeah. that we, we recognise that as a country and as institutions, we have a duty of care towards our international students. We need to look after them well. We need to make sure that they are safe when they're with us. Okay. Thank you so much, Andrea, for your kind information. So. Uh, already why you should consider uh, New Zealand as of our future study destination because of the quality of the education and the high ranked uh, university and that they have a wide range of program. I just love to add a few more things because the uh, tuition fees uh, of the New Zealand is very affordable if you compare to other priority study destination. Uh, moreover, is a one of the safe learning environment because from Bangladesh to New Zealand, it takes about 14 hours journey. So it's quite far away from Bangladesh. So it's like the people, our uh, parents are from Bangladesh and the friends are from Bangladesh. They will be thinking like that, that either New Zealand is a safe country or not, I must say. And I believe Andrew will be the very much agreed with that. That this is the, one of the safest place for the interested students for their father's study destination. Moreover, they confirm the safe learning environment for every single international individual students. So quality of education, reasonable tuition fees, and the safe learning environment, and the qualification is recognized around the world. So that makes the New Zealand is acceptable uh, most of the potential students around the beautiful world. So thank you so much, Andrea, for your kind information. So could you please tell me a little bit more about your university, please, that the I know that the Victoria University of Wellington is located in the capital city and, and we know it's the capital university too. So could you please tell me the history of the education of the university? Because I come to know is the more than 100 years the history of education towards the potential student. Could you please tell me a little bit more about the university establishment and the location please? And the subject that you are offering, especially in the faculty, then we'll be more going in detail subject by subject please.
definitely. So we are quite an old university. We were founded in 1897, uh, mm -hmm. so more than 100 years old, as you mentioned. Now, within yeah. Wellington, we have three main campuses, and they are very centrally located. So the yeah. majority of the subjects are taught at our Kelburn campus, which is up yeah. on a hill looking the beautiful city we then have specialty uh, a specialty business and law campus which is right in the heart of the city our law students learn directly opposite the supreme court our yeah. business students are in a purpose-built building which is right near the government executive building and then yeah. our architecture and design students have their own uh special campus which is at te Aro, which is in the creative and the cultural heart of the city so all very well connected it's possible to walk between all three campuses within 20 minutes each way very easy to yep. get around all we right. have, uh, we have eight teaching faculties so wow. uh, yeah, one thing to note is that we don't have a medical school. There's only two universities yeah. in New Zealand that do, but we do yeah. teach most other subjects. Yeah. So our engineering faculty uh, focuses on computer science, software engineering, cybersecurity engineering, and electronics and computer system engineering. We don't have mechanical or civil engineering, yeah. but do have building science which is similar to civil engineering technology it's about yes. construction project management and sustainable yes. engineering design we yes. have the faculty of architecture and the faculty of design we are one of only two universities in new zealand that offers the uh, masters of architecture through which students, including international students, can gain their registration as an architect in New Zealand. So that's it's a very prestigious faculty. It's in the top uh, 150 uh, universities worldwide for architecture and design. We have our science faculty. And the science faculty teaches pretty much all areas you could be looking at in the sciences, whether it's physics, chemistry, ecology and biodiversity, renewable energy, uh, environmental sciences, uh, mathematics, statistics. There's a whole gamut of areas there. Apart from that, we do also have a specialization in biomedical science. All so right who are interested in a career in medical research. We have some great relationships with research facilities there, including the Mulligan yeah. Institute and the Ferrier Institute that are working on very exciting, um, very cutting edge medical research. Okay, so it means that the uh, Victoria University of Wellington is offering a wide range of programs so a student could select the best program that quite suit for their career in their future uh, career prospect and the employability. We are very much so. And apart from the ones I've already mentioned, there's humanities, there's business and government, there's law. We're very highly ranked in law as well. Uh, yep. There's health and there's communication. I've probably yep. forgotten something, but those <laughs> those are the main faculties. Okay, okay, no, that's fine. Thank you so much, Priyo Shikhati Bandura. After that, into Jenny Palan, the Victoria University of Wellington. Now there are the faculty rates and they have a wide range of program. So you could select the best program that quite suit for your career, for your future. So there are a lot of questions is coming to at this moment, Andra. So uh, we'll be going for the one by one. So Priyo Shikhati Bundura, after JJ can push our Facebook live session, the extension of a cover of Vinod and Janati, our Facebook live session, and Jara later join Kuchan. I'm up to the Shokul Kirikos. Could you please share this Facebook video with your friends and family members which wishing to studying in abroad, especially in the New Zealand. Just for your kind information, Bangladeshi students are on English brilliant, on English madhavi, and on English financially sound and solvent. But very unfortunately, due to the small amount of the information, sometimes we cannot reach on our destination. So please share the video with your friends and family members so that they'll have a lot of information. So. Uh, Andrea, you have the both undergraduate and the postgraduate program as well as for the PhD. Am I correct? Yes, correct. We do. Yeah. Okay. And cool. in all of our faculties, whichever option it is, there would be both an undergraduate and a postgraduate option within those areas, as well as appropriate PhD supervision. And we do currently have a good number of uh, students from Bangladesh coming, in particular for the PhD program, and yeah. then. Um, um, a number within our postgraduate and our undergraduate faculties as well. 
thank you so much because there is a question is coming up from the Said Abdullah Sheikh. Can I admit for the PhD? So, sure. Mr. Said Abdullah uh, Sheikh, I will be humble requesting you. Could you please uh, share your all academic information here that the, when you have done on your class 10th certificate, class 12th certificate, and the bachelor and the master's, and then do you have any publication and the, which course that you love to go for your PhD? Please share in here. And the, me and Andhra will be giving you all kind of information that is required by you. And thank you so much for watching us here. And yeah. the good news is that you see that the students are watching from Malaysia. So it's like the ah. people from the everywhere in this beautiful world. So Andre, if I come back to you, like as you said, there is a lot of programs is offered by the university. But could you please tell me that the for Bangladeshi student, which program is topmost popular if you talk about especially for the undergraduate and the master's program, please? Sure. So leaving PhD aside, which is where the majority of my students from Bangladesh are, uh, the Masters of Professional Accounting is a very popular program because it does have a pathway to chartered accountancy accreditation wow. in it. Yeah. yeah, it gives you a fast track to becoming a chartered accountant. It's a yeah. program takes one and a half years to complete and you don't need to have a previous background in accounting. You can come from other back academic backgrounds into it. Apart okay. from that, the Masters of Global Business is another yeah. really popular option because it provides students with specializations in management or marketing or information systems and finance, uh, which they are able to go into uh, post any previous academic backgrounds. I've oh. also found uh, that law is a popular choice for students from Bangladesh who are looking for an LLM qualification. We yeah. do get some, some students within that qualification. And there's also been a good amount of uh, interest and enrollments in the architecture and the design courses. So we have some very innovative ones, including user experience design, which focuses on UXIX technologies, as well as the professional architecture programs. So they would be the, um, the most popular options options for the students from Bangladesh. At undergraduate level, I think the Bachelors of Commerce and the Bachelors of Engineering are generally the most popular yes. options for undergraduate students. Yeah. Yes, you are correct. Thank you so much. So, Piyo Shikhati Bundura, Apra Kintu Jenenile and Jay Ashley, Bortoman Shumai, Bangladeshi student from Victoria University of Wellington and New Zealand, they are going to undergraduate program in business and engineering program portion of Parajuna Kintu Jatse. That Pasha Pashi, if you'd love to go for your master's program, especially for the professional accounting and the LLM program, is respected around the beautiful world. So those people are really, really interested for you for this study, especially for the LLM program and for the professional accounting. Please come and talk to us, and we are here to give you all kind of solution. So Andra, there is a question is come up to for Mr. Tipu Sultan Dulal. He wanted to know, can I apply for MBA or master's and the admission requirement? Can you please tell me a little bit more about the MBA or the master's program uh, regarding the business studies faculty, especially for the IELTS requirement and the tuition fees and the duration and the employability in details, please? Yeah, sure, definitely. So just one thing to note is that generally we need a four-year bachelor's degree from students yes. from Bangladesh. Otherwise, yes. you can do three years plus master's or plus another postgraduate qualification to meet the entry requirements. Now, MBA. Yeah, MBA in New Zealand does require work experience. So we have yeah. an executive MBA program, which takes around one and a half years to complete. We do have a triple crown accredited business school with the AMBA, AACSB and Equus accreditations, one of only 70 business schools in the world uh, to yes. hold those accreditations. So if you do pursue your MBA from uh, Victoria University of Wellington, it will be very well respected. So the executive MBA requires five years of work experience at either the executive or managerial levels. And you do also have to do a GMAT alongside. Okay. In GMAT, you would have to score 550 and above. So okay. for students who are not meeting that criteria, I would recommend yeah. the Masters of Global Business instead. The Masters okay. of Global 
business does not need GMAT and it also does not have a uh, work experience criteria. Mm -hmm. So you can go in as a fresh graduate or someone who has less experience than the five years requested. And you yeah. can then use your specialization within it. It's a one year program. It usually has a November intake, but they are about to introduce additional intakes in February and July, which I think will be very convenient for all of the students and also means that if there's concerns over not being able to travel in November due to the situation, you can just adjust your intake to the next one. So when we talk about fees, the uh, executive MBA costs around 58,000 New Zealand dollars and the of global business costs around 45,000 New Zealand dollars and I'll if you want I'll try and do a, a currency conversion to work out how much that is in Taka yeah. I get uh, I, I get a little confused over my well, currency. No, I can tell you like around uh, 24 lakhs in BDT yeah. in Taka. Yeah. so it's quite affordable because such a kind of master's program and a world ranking university from the capital university in the new zealand and i believe the 24 uh, four lakhs is quite affordable if you compare for the australia if you compare for the us if you compare for the canada too i must say is that it is very affordable and uh, could you please tell me whenever we come for the tuition fees but could you please tell me a little bit more about do you offer any scholarship for any undergraduate or a master's program, please? Or what kind of scholarship that you are offering at this moment for the interested student, please? Yeah, so we do offer scholarships. We have some academic merit scholarships, which are applicable oh. to all of our programs. So the Tonga Rewa scholarship is for either $5,000 or $10,000. You can apply for it across any program in undergrad or postgrad, and it's entirely academic merit-based. So we have oh. a look at or your grades, and then we decide which students are are achieving it. We also have special scholarships for masters by thesis, which is up to $15,000. We have another um, masters by coursework scholarship called the Wellington Graduate Award, which is for $5,000. And then some of our programs have dedicated scholarships. So for example, the LLM has a $5,000 scholarship that students can apply for on the basis of need rather than merit. Uh, Then every year we will usually announce something called automatic scholarships. This is usually when we're introducing a new program that we're trying to promote so we'll we'll get the first batch in and it means that as long as you get an offer for that program you get a scholarship and it's usually of ten thousand dollars. So this year we had automatic scholarships in the Masters of Engineering Practice, the Masters of Conservation Biology, the Masters of Marine Conservation, and the Masters of International Trade. Next year we have to see which programs they are offering it for, but it's it's good to keep an eye out because it is, uh, I mean, $10,000 is a nice scholarship amount if you are applying for it. It is, it is, it is. So, Priya Shikhata Bandura, after I came to Jenny and Victoria University of Wellington, they have a wide range of scholarship opportunities too. If you have a very good academic records, I must say this is the very best time to apply. In the on the besides that, if you have the working experience, that would also add the value on your profile to achieve this scholarship. So, but if I come back to Andhra for the uh, scholarship, do you believe that the student need to apply for the separate application, or it, it or it will be automatically rewarded? How does it work? Yeah. So if it's one of our automatic scholarships, it's automatically awarded. And if you are a PhD student, it is assessed alongside your PhD application. So you don't have to make a separate application for a scholarship if you're applying for PhD. But for the academic merit scholarships, yes, you do have to make a separate application. You first have to get an offer of place for your uh, your program. Once you have the offer of place, you then apply via the online portal for your scholarship. Okay. No, thank you so much. So whenever we come back for a uh, offer letter and the scholarship issue. So Priya Shikhati Bandura, the how the scholarship uh, is uh, offered or operated by the university. So I'm after the Shakul request, if you're really, really interested, please 
come and talk to us and make a note and share all of your academic information je apni koto sale ssc pass korechen koto sale ssc pass korechen ar jodi keu bachelor jodi complete kore thaken tahole apni koto sale bachelor complete korechen ebong apnar ielts score koto royeche if you have any working experience please share with us and we are more than happy to support you there are a lot of good information is coming on the way is like those people are got married and love to study in lovely environment in new zealand to with your spouse and babies and there's a lot of options too so we'll be talking about a little bit more about so until that please keep watching us so andra if i come back to you that the could you please tell me normally how long it takes time to issue an offer of place from the victoria university of wellington place yeah Especially so it and the post graduation program could you please mention in details Yeah so it depends which program you're applying for undergraduate is very fast because all we need to do is have a look at the academic documents we it doesn't have to go to faculty so undergraduate is usually within one or two weeks maximum postgrad okay. sometimes it's within two weeks sometimes it can take up to four to six weeks if it needs a faculty approval because then first my admissions team takes a look at the application and they forward it to faculty for the assessment so we would say somewhere between one to six weeks depending on the program you're applying for if you're applying for phd we have three cut off points in the year 1st of march 1st of july and 1st of november so you just yep. need your application to be completed before one of those dates and then you hear back within 4 to 6 weeks after that date has passed yes and the good news i love to share all of our uh, student that the new zealand phd is a one of the top phd in the beautiful world and uh, i believe that the new zealand government giving the lot of subsidy for the international students especially when it comes for the phd because the tuition fees is the same as the local students right and yeah it's as very close yeah so tuition fees for phd programs are usually only around 7000 or $8000 per year so it's yeah. very yeah. reasonable even if you don't uh receive a scholarship but there are a lot of scholarships available alongside as well yeah i just love to and add uh, a few points on there sorry uh, you you want to add something Uh, I was just going to say that we are the uh, number one ranked university in New Zealand for the intensity of high quality research. So it is a fantastic place to do your PhD studies. Yes, thank you so much. And I just love to add few more uh, things. It's like last year I sent about three applicants to New Zealand to other providers for their PhD. Initially, they don't have their uh, funding. You know, they don't have their scholarship. So what they have done. because the new zealand phd is consist of three consecutive year so they can go for the little bit slower if they can continue after four years and sometimes five years too but depending on the course depending on the professors and the differing de- depending on the instructor so what happened one of my student uh, already uh, after reaching in new zealand she applied for the uh, scholarship and mm-hmm. her scholarship was granted for the second year not only the tuition fees is scholarship but also she uh, she is currently receiving uh, stephen by the university so those students are, re- are really really interested to study in new zealand i must say it's a great place especially if you think for the phd program because the tuition fees is very reasonable when it comes for the phd 7 to 8000 new zealand dollar in bangladeshi taka is like a uh, 3 lakhs approximately so it's quite affordable i believe that the yeah. students take this advantage to get the phd uh, from such a wonderful university from victoria university of wellington so as you said under uh, that uh, it takes couple of weeks for your undergraduate program and uh, for the masters program it takes about 4 to 6 weeks so when about when it comes about uh, you know the professors approval and others but if i come back to you that the Can you please tell me that the IELTS requirement for the both undergraduate and the postgraduate, please? Yes, I did see that question come up as well. So, yeah. for undergraduate studies, we need overall six with no band less than five point five. We yeah. do also take TOEFL and we do also take Pearson test. Okay. Uh, at the moment, while everything's in lockdown, we are accepting IELTS indicator and we are accepting TOEFL online for students who are planning to begin this year. Now, okay. for 
postgraduate, we have a requirement of overall 6.5 with yep. no band less than six. That's the same for both masters as well as PhD. Wow. There are some programs that have a higher requirement. So law needs seven with a seven in writing and otherwise 6.5. And yep. teaching needs seven in each band because of the registration requirements when you're, you're going for your teacher's registration. Okay, thank you so much. And I believe that the requirement is quite flexible if we compare to other country and other university too, especially for the undergraduate and the masters and the PhD too. Because some of the country for the PhD they require for the seven point zero, but where is your master's requirement for the ILTS as a such a wonderful university is only six point five, no one less than six. So if I come yeah. back to you, Andhra, because there are a lot of students, so because you know that the Bangladesh is not an English speaking country and you are well aware of it, though most of our students they are very good in English. But if I come back to you, if some of the students got the very smaller number uh, in the ILTS, especially for the undergraduate programs, like as we say that the, you have the requirement of overall 6.0, no one less than 5.5 in each band. But uh, if we, if I ask you, like, if the student got the overall 6.0, but in a one band is 5.0, or in overall 5.5 and no one less than 5.5, what kind of code that you are offering? Though there are a lot of university, college and institution, they have the pre-sessional or the foundation or the pathway program. And how does it work? I know that they have a wonderful solution, but students are excited to learn from more about from you. Yes. So if a student is otherwise eligible for entry, but they're just missing out on the English requirements, there's yeah. two pathways that they can go through. Uh, if they are looking at undergraduate study, then they may wish to enroll for foundation studies at our yeah. partner college up education. They yeah. run a fab program which can be anywhere from six months to 18 months long, depending on the banding, which yeah. allows student to have two offers of place, one for foundation studies and one for their bachelor's degree. So by the time they enter the bachelor's degree, then they're more far more confident because they've built up their English language skills and yeah. they've all built up their study skills as well so that they're yeah. prepared for the university environment. Okay, now, so, yeah, go on. Yeah. If a student is going for postgraduate study, then we do have an English proficiency program that they can undertake if their band is just slightly below what they need. If yeah. it's 0.5 below the uh, requirements, that usually takes three months. If it's okay. one below the requirements, it usually takes six months. And one thing to note is that with the present scenario, both foundation studies as well as the English proficiency program are being offered online at the moment so that students wow. can at least get their initial requirements out of the way before they then begin their qualification. Okay, thank you so much, Andrea, for your nice and kind information. And I believe that the, most of our students, they have a clear uh, and a uh, clarification from you. So, Priya Shikhati Bandura, after a Emute, a Nishai, Amadir Kota Shokoli, Monadu de Shunten, a Bong Nisha, a Pusta Patsen, the New Zealand Day, Jawajan National Kiki Amadir Koronio, Amra Itimote Kotapolati, why students should consider New Zealand as of our future study destination. Then we talk more about the Victoria University of Wellington location and the courses is offered by them. And we already talked about the IELTS requirement. We'll be going for the more about the tuition fees details. We already talked about the uh, scholarship and the tuition fees details a little bit, but we'll be talking more about it. And there are a lot of exciting news that's come up. So, Priya Shikhati Bandura, Apra K Kutat Teke Imut Namadar Ke Dekchen Kindly Jana Ben. Ebo, good news is there, Jara Apra Vibahi to graduate Rhe Chen Apra Kintu Chayle Apra Da Apra Da Respose Shau Kare Kintu At a Time Kintu Aya Visa Jun May Apply Kutte Pat Chen Ebo, Akshati Kintu Fly Kutte Pat Chen. And I believe the Apra Respose Kintu During On His Study Period He or She Can Work For The Full Time. So, we'll be talking about more in the working rights and the other opportunity after completing their education in New Zealand. Those people are thinking for the New Zealand for your second home. So, Andrea, if I come back to you, uh, that the, as you said, that the, you have the foundation programming, you have the 
pathway program, those students have a little bit lower score on their IELTS score. But how long they will get the visa? They will get the visa for the entire program or they will get the visa for the foundation program or the pre-sessional program? How does it work, please? No, so if they're going for foundation studies and then a bachelor's degree, it's regarded as being a pathway program where they, yeah. they're doing one program to lead to the next program. So if you're a pathway student, then you do get your visa usually for both programs rather than just the first one. So that's a great news. So a student, those who are having a little bit lower school, so don't think for uh, for your visa thing because uh, you will get the visa for your entire program. That's the foundation leading to your bachelor or the pre-masters leading to your bachelor. So you will get the uh, total duration visa uh, at a time. And uh, another exciting news I must uh, ask you to sharing from Dandra. Andra, how the tuition fees will work? In the, I know the New Zealand, uh, they're very friendly and that they understand that, that uh, the tuition fee is not uh, required before they get the visa. But there are a lot of countries like the USA, Australia, Canada, they're always asking for the tuition fees in advance. And they, if their visa got the refused, so sometimes they did a certain amount of the money. And the, due to the currency fluctuation, so a student are uh, financially, you know, that the they lose certain amount of money. So how things work for the New Zealand and how things work for the uh, Victory University of Wellington, please? Yeah. So there's no application fee. You don't have to pay anything when you apply to us. So what yeah. happens, the standard procedure is that you first apply for your offer. You get yeah. your offer place and then at the right period of time, maybe three or four months before your program, that's yeah. ideal. Some students yeah. do it one or two months beforehand. Then yeah. you apply for your visa. Yeah. Now, visa usually takes somewhere between one to two months, so please leave enough time for that. They yeah. assess the application. Once the immigration mm -hmm. officer is satisfied, they will give you what is called an approval in principle. So yeah, the approval or the AIP, it basically yeah. says, yes, you're approved for study. Now you just have to do this last uh, procedure, which is to pay your fees. Sometimes there's something else in there if you haven't given your police certificate or something like that. Yeah. But most of the time, it's just the fee payment. So at that yeah. point in time, you pay your fees, you get your fee receipt from the university, and then you get your final visa. Okay. So that's the good news is there. And... Uh, to get the New Zealand study permit visa, you don't need to travel for the new, uh, to India. It's like online, so we do by ourselves. You just uh, uh, simply find, uh, apply online and upload all the required document in the set up by the Immigration New Zealand and the, we are more than happy to give you the support. So as Andrea said, that the, there is no application fee. See, if you go for the uh, USA, if you go for the Canada, there are a lot of university, a lot of college and a lot of institution, they are asking for the application, mm -hmm. but in, for the New Zealand and especially for the Victory University of Wellington, they don't have any application fee. So uh, without paying any application fee, without paying any tuition fees, so you're ready to apply. And good news is that the after their kekono down a tuition fees, we are going to apply for pay for those China. So, jodi kono kono apna visa the now jodi hoy, so you don't lose any any amount. So it's like a great option. So, but I believe that the Victory University of Wellington they have a very good visa success history, especially around the world because it's a university and uh, they are the top three hundred world ranking university and uh, they are the top two percent world class university around the world and that uh, they have a good employment ratio for the those people that are graduates so we'll be talking about a little bit more about on details <coughs> so and there are there are a lot of questions is coming up one of our students wanted to know he's from the chitagang one of our uh, business district in bangladesh and he completed his bachelor in uh, electrical and electronic engineering and he got the ILTC score overall 5.5 and uh, having work experience and interested about the masters in electrical engineering please guide me so what could be your advice as i can see the student ilt is a little bit lower though your ilt is requirement from your university is 6.5 so what could be the best solution yeah so for jahid uh, what i would recommend is that you have because it's a bsc rather than an engineering qualification my uh, recommendation would be to apply for either a postgraduate diploma in science 
in electronics electrical. You could also apply for renewable energy systems if you do have relevant subjects in your background. You could also apply for a master's of science in electrical and electronics. So the postgraduate diploma in science is a one year qualification, which is entirely coursework. It's the first yeah. year of yeah. the master's. So you can either stop at that stage, graduate just with the postgraduate diploma, or you continue and do a second year to complete your master's. The second year is a thesis component. So it depends on whether you'd like to do research or not as part of the postgraduate qualification. You, yeah. you would need to improve your IELTS first, so you would need to look at either doing that over here or else applying for the English proficiency program alongside. Thank you so much uh, for your kind information. So we have our another guest is waiting all the way from uh, our education, so Miss Ritu. So we'll be welcoming on board. Uh, hello, Ritu, and thank you so much for joining our uh, Facebook live session. And how are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. And I am following the session right now. Uh, I must say it's it's very informative and very well you know, planned. And I'm sure it's going to help a lot of students of yours to get a very clear idea about how does you know uh, New Zealand education function and why should they consider Victoria University to study. Yes. And just to introducing you guys that, that those students have a little bit lower score on your IELTS score or in the uh, CGPA, or if you don't have the uh, working experience, the Miss Ritu is here. She's always giving all kinds of support to get on your admission done by like through the app education pathway provider. Because uh, right. uh, Ms. Ritu, I, I must always say, because I work with a lot of institution, a lot of market manager, but I found she's one of the very good supporters. So if I come back to you, Ritu, so if the student love to go for the, as you are running the foundation program on behalf of the Victoria University of Wellington, uh, can you please tell me that uh, usually for the Victoria University of Wellington for their undergraduate program, uh, they takes around uh, two weeks to issue an offer of plans. But what about you for the foundation of the pathway program? How long you people take time to issue an offer of place, please? Sure. So when it comes to the foundation program, so any student who's not meeting up the English requirement or who's not meeting up the academic requirement uh, with respect to university can opt for foundation. Now, when I say foundation, it basically related with undergraduation. We do not have yeah. pathway for masters or any other program. So yeah. all those students who, who've uh, given their 12th exams or already ha have the 12th score and looking to study undergraduation and not able to get direct entry to university, that's where the pathway program helps you. So in Pathway, we have uh, different versions of the program. When I say that, it basically means the duration. That duration yeah. depends on your English proficiency test score. So, yeah. so it varies from uh, the band of six in IELTS to 5.5 to 5. So we yeah. have program categories which ranges from one year in duration to eight months to six months. OK. So that's something which is, I think, a very fast uh, way to you know, gives you the opportunity to get into the university. Even when you're going to apply to RC academics, we need you to have minimum 50% to, you know, when you apply for the yes. program. And the best part is that you can study any bachelor's program. You're not bound to that, oh, I cannot study science because the pathway option is not available. I cannot study engineering or you know, any program of your choice. So foundation opens that opportunity to you. And just imagine studying in a one of the top ranked university, your dream still you can you can make it through uh, by by doing the pathway program with us. Now, when it comes to the fee structure of the pathway foundation program, it, it basically asking you for the fees yeah. for the scholarship options too. It's it's very very economical, you know. It it ranges from eighteen thousand New Zealand dollars to two twenty one thousand New Zealand dollars, so which is I think very very economical. Uh, uh, so the range of eighteen to twenty one thousand is based on the duration of the program you're going to be eligible for. Yeah. So if it's a fast track program, somebody has an IELTS score or IELTS band of six. Overall yeah. band is uh, five point five. Can go for fast track program and that costs you eighteen thousand New Zealand dollars. Somebody yeah. who's, 
whose score is little lower then has to pay little extra that that's how because the duration increases so you pay about 21000 uh, someone who again has a much lower score when i say much lower which is like ielts band 5 and no band less than 4.5 now yeah. in that category that program is one year in duration and that cost you about 28000 of new zealand dollars yeah so so overall the fees is not uh, uh, overly priced to be honest um, because you know it also gives you a time to really work on your profile it acts as a bridge you know by the yeah. time you complete your foundation and join the university program a lot of student um, face a problem with adjusting with the environment they feel little low in confident because they feel my academics not great my english is not great how would i cope up in the university so the pathway the foundation program act as a bridge you know you get the comfort yes. because most of the student who not just comes from south asia but all over the world they are on a similar platform so you yes. feel comfortable you know um, when you see that okay i am just not the the person in into feeling that uh, uh, you know uh, problem with the english or not that fluent with the english or probably thinking how my academics gonna be like when i am going to be at the university campus because my academics are little low you get the environment you get that comfort professors are very faculty members are very closely connected with student any extra assistance you need you support you get that support so this is why foundation has been designed you know to to make you feel comfortable to build the confidence so that you can perform better in your academics and and that's how the foundation program uh, uh, functions for a student and trust me students who've done their foundation and and went to the university they are very happy performing extremely well and not just this we do have scholarships all right so but scholarship now limits to the july intake at the moment now july intake we all know that we do not know when the border will open when we going to fly though we all desperately waiting for that to happen so to support uh, the student uh, during this time since we are doing the online uh, classes we are offering the scholarship as well it based on merit it based on profile to profile uh, and the scholarship we offering is about 5000 new zealand dollars which is quite a handsome amount Yeah. if you calculate that to the fee that we uh, you know uh, asking you to pay for the course and uh, i think all you need to do is to be very focused with the situation we know we are into it we can't do anything yeah. about it all we can do is to stay positive and utilize the time so i'll not suggest that okay wait for the situation then take a call if you are very much okay to go for the online classes please do that because we give you two weeks time to take a call all right yes. take a call in the sense you pay the fee you join july batch attend the classes for two weeks if you feel that still i am not able to understand defer it for next intake when you defer yes. it for next intake your entire fee would also be deferred to next intake so you're not losing on money it just that without giving a try to online learning deciding that no i'll wait and defer i personally suggest that's not a right thing to do at least experience something you know you will be acquainting with all the students who are from all over the world attending those online classes so yes. before being at the university you able to make friends you able to you know connect with them and get the feel you know get the feel how the course is going to like what i'm going to study you know so it's it's very exciting to do that way because when you at university you will also be working on your system you will also be working on your assignments projects so eventually this is going to be a part of your of your course as well so why not now yes yes so so thank you so much miss ritu so if i come back to you could you please tell me where is the pathway a uh, uh, class taking place is in the inside the campus or they can access the all the facilities uh, designed by the university Uh, can you please tell me a little bit more about those? So we have our own college building, which is five minutes walking distance away from the university campus. That's where we run our programs, and uh, student uh, uh, can easily access the university. But yes, while doing the pathway program with us, they're going to be uh, coming to our college building. It's very beautiful building. It has all the facilities. um we using all the modern uh, latest technology to make a student you know have that feel and do not miss the university part yes. and once they finish their pathway program the foundation program with us then they move to the university campus but yes they can do visit the university and 
you know uh, get the feeling of of being the part of that university as well no thank and, you so much yeah I I'd, I'd, I'd like to mention is one of the last times I was down in New Zealand, I actually attended a traditional welcome ceremony for our incoming foundation study students. So even before they've joined the university, while they're still in their foundation studies, we do a traditional Māori welcome for them yeah. called a pōtiri. So we call all the students up to the mare, which is the, the traditional meeting house. It's a really beautiful ceremony. And it does, it helps them to feel that they are part of the university even yeah. before they, they've formally graduated from the, their foundation studies program. Yeah. Thank you so much. So Priya Shikhatabundura, after I came to Genevite Pallan, though we have a little bit lower score on your IELTS score, but you are dreaming to becoming a successful student one of the top ranking world-class university. So we all three people are here to make your dreams come true. So don't feel that the if you have a lower score, don't feel like this is the end of your life because mm -hmm. social admission service, our education and the victory in which they're willing to, we people all are working together to make your dream come true and to helping to find out the best course that suits for your career the best uh, institution that suits for your career and the best uh, scholarship we can find out according to your academic merits and your uh, demands, you know. So, Mr. Tu, would you like to add uh, any comments on those things? Uh, so, yes, definitely. Uh, because, you know, uh, instead of I land up compromising on my choices to study to any university and compromising to the fact that, oh, I cannot make it to the top one, so let me just go to any university because I get a direct program and I will be saving my some months. I will not suggest you that uh, you should never compromise on the choice of university when you are getting the top university. And this is the reason why we have foundation program offering to the student. See, we are working. It's been many years that we are working with the university, Victoria University, and uh, we build up great relationship every year. So many student travels to New Zealand and study and do their foundation. So if you're putting a little extra time to get something best for yourself, then why not? You know, so I would personally believe in that uh, education is, is, is these days is not something bounded towards your academics because we all understand how our education system functions. Uh, kids are much smarter. You know, you need to be street smart. If you think you're street smart, you will do very well in, 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 in the university program. And I'm why I'm saying so, because they are very practical in nature. We just yes. don't do theories in the university. We are doing things which are more teaching you the real day to day way we work in the offices, how we are experiencing the market yes. that you do when you work on your projects, interacting with these students. And at the end of the day, it's global exposure. You know, you're interacting with students coming from all over the world. You're interacting yes. with them. You're learning their culture. You're learning their language. You're making friends. So tomorrow you can say that I have friends in, in probably 13 countries. So wherever I go, I can at least, you know, stay with them. And you can plan business. You can plan a lot of things that you wish to. So, yes. so if you're dreaming, try to achieve it, that's what would I say. Do not feel that, oh, my friend went to that university. Ah, what life they are into. I am not able to, you know, experience that because my profile is not like that. There's always choices, options available. It's just that you need to educate yourself because you yes. do not have knowledge. You land up compromising on your education. Do not do that. You have a lot of options available. Study with best university. Do not compromise on your education. Because what you do today is going to build up your career tomorrow. Yes, your career. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ms. Ritu, for your kind information. So, your Shikhati Bundura, I just love to add a few more things because the those students are joining for the foundation. I must say because I have visited a lot of institution, college, and the university around the world. The those students going for the foundation program. Most of the cases that I found, their class size is very small. Most of the time that I have found like 18 to 20 students in a one classroom. So you come to know your teacher, your teachers come to know you. So there are a lot of interactions that's taking place during your study period. That gives you the more confidence to know more little bit uh, about the course in depth. So that could help you to adjust with your teachers during your study period in the university. So foundation is like creating the bridge between your academic qualification with matches to the top ranking world class university. 
So, Miss Pitu, thank you so much. Definitely, we'll be come back to you. So, I just want to go for a little bit more about on the Andhra, a little bit more information. So, Andhra, thank you so much for your kind help and the information. But if I come back to you, Andhra, could you please tell me a little bit more about the information that interested student the working rights? So, before you yeah. going there, so there are a lot of students is a. Uh, 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 coming from the uh, students. So we'll be going for the question and answering session. So before we move, we'll be talking about the working rights as of their, uh, as an international students during their study period and the what kind of working opportunity they will be having once they will be finishing their qualification in New Zealand. So Priya Shikhati Bodhura, after the Shakole, Amadir Kemut, JJ Kanaboshi Dixon. I'm after the Shakole Kachi request for the Dekun, it takes the information with the Amadir Facebook live session, Kuchi, American educated for a journal after the case of Fiji and Amraman, the knowledge share for the Patti. We can share our knowledge and the ideas and the critical thinking. So I'm after the Shakole request for today. Please share the video as much as you want so that Amra Chaibona, the Amadir Desh and Madhavi Shikatira, should want to information gather Karana Tarata the Kanki to Loki that they put at a bet to Jatanahoi. Karana Amra, we go to dinner, Kormo, we go to a look at the Kachi, the Amadir Desh student, Onik Vishi Madhavi, Onik Vishi Bichokun, but very unfortunately, Shudumato, Shotik information, Shotik Dignation, and Shotik guideline Nathakar Karani, Tarakin to Tadar Kanki to Loki, Poch at the Pachan. So I'm after the Shokul Kirikos Kubo. They please, after. Rajay Jekan Bushama, the Facebook live session, let's share this video. Can an upper eighty share video into upper wallet, a shuffle friend, the kick into the academy in the Shahota Kutepare. And with this pandemic situation, we people are working very, very hard because Miss Andra, she's working for hard for you, Miss Ritu, working for hard for you, and for myself, we all are working for your betterment. So, after Jay Jekan Bushama, the Facebook live session, let's say, Shuffle Katabari to request, could you please share the video? With your friends and family members, and ask as many questions as we want, and we are more than happy to give you the answer in here. So, Miss Andrea, if I come back to you, could you please tell me a little bit more about the working rights during the study period? Because there are a lot of countries like in US, but the industry mm -hmm. student can only work on their own campus. But Australia, as an industry student, they can work for the 20 hours during their part time. But there is a Canada also. But what could be for the New Zealand and what, what opportunities offered by your university, please? Yeah, so I think our system is probably very similar to the Australian system, if the, yeah. the students are, are familiar with that, in that yeah. students are allowed to work up to 20 hours a week, part-time during semester, and then in any scheduled holiday, they can work full-time at that time. There's no restrictions that it has to be only on campus. They can work wherever they find a part-time job. Okay. Um, so part-time uh, minimum wage in New Zealand is about $19 an hour, $18.90. Wow. Yeah, so it is very generous. You can supplement, yeah. Yeah. You can supplement your, your living expenses quite well with a part-time job while you're there and studying. And then when students finish their qualification, if they've got a bachelor's degree, a postgraduate diploma, a master's or a PhD, they do get three years of work visa when they finish. So it's a very generous amount of time to be able to stay back, gain work experience, start your career in the country. Okay, thank you so much. So, Priya Shikhatabundura, you already come to know that as an internship student uh, in New Zealand, you could work 20 hours per week and during on your study period. And the good news is that whenever you are in a vacation, I mean, whenever you're in a holiday, you could work full time without having any restriction. But amazing news is there, if you go for the New Zealand, it doesn't make any sense that you can only work in the university campus, but also that it's your right to move anywhere to work. So it's a great option. So another good news is that after completing on your education, you will be having the three years consecutively post student work visa. See, this work visa is not only the earning money, as I say it always to our students. It's all about like getting some hands-on learning experience after completing on your education, because uh, once you have some hands-on learning experience, that could help you to find out a better employability, not only in New Zealand, but also around the world, because the New Zealand educated prepare you for the future, because they work for the future generation. And uh, New Zealand education is a most hands-on learning experience, more than practical, so whatever education 
you will be receiving for university whenever you go for your corporate life i believe that you will never find anything new though new zealand is always saying that try something new every single day and think new so this is the more slogan for the new zealander and i really love it so guys if you're really, really interested to study in the New Zealand with the quality of education, with a high standard of education and the reasonable tuition fees, uh, I must say New Zealand is one of the topmost priority and the perfect destination. So, Andrea, there are a few questions coming from here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hanif Uddin, he just wanted to know, he's from the Kumila one part of the Bangladesh, and uh, he has completed his Bachelor of Science in Computer uh, computer science and engineering got CGP 3.70, tremendous results out of four. And uh, he doesn't have the IELTS score, but he's having the good working experience about three years plus. Could you please give me advice? What could be your advice, please? Sure. So, Mohammed Hanif, uh, good to hear from you. Um, you will need to do IELTS. We unfortunately don't give uh, exemptions at postgrad. We do have some at undergrad, depending on which board you've studied in. So, but you can apply for a conditional offer without your IELTS and provide it to us later for the unconditional. So that is a system we have there. It doesn't have to be given upfront with the rest of the documents. Now, depending on what area your work experience is in and depending on uh, where you would like to make your career after your postgraduate qualification, there's a number of different programs that I would recommend to you. We do have a master's of computer science. You can do yep. subjects in software engineering, network engineering, cybersecurity, machine yep. learning data science within it. It has two intakes in a year, February and July. It usually takes 18 months to complete and the fees are somewhere around 54,000 New Zealand dollars. Yes. So this um, uh, one, one more option, if you would like a career as a business analyst, which is a very up and coming uh, occupation yeah. to be in a new and lots of demand for it. That is true. Yeah, very. it's a very good one, right? And this is probably yeah. one of my most popular programs at the university as well. We have yeah. the Masters of Professional Business Analysis. It's a one-year program. This year, we will be running it online in July, or otherwise students can choose to apply for the March 2021 intake and arrive in person if they yeah. would prefer that. Uh, and it's a conversion program, so you don't need to have a previous background in business analysis to apply for it. So those are probably the two top programs I would recommend to you. And my advice is usually to choose basis what you would like your career outcomes to be, which type of um, computer science or IT occupation you would like to be in when you finish. Thank you so much. So, Andrea, if I come back to you, because you know that, that due to the pandemic situation, a student are not uh, able to attend for the IELTS classes or the IELTS examination. But can you please tell me, like, that those students already done their class 10th and 12th, or they have done their bachelor, but they love to go for the undergraduate program or any master's program at your Victory yeah. University of Wellington. So, without having their IELTS score, can they apply for the receive a conditional offer of place, please? Yes, they can. So we will give conditional offers without IELTS for most of our programs. The yeah. only one that you can't receive an offer for without IELTS is teaching. Teaching is very strict on having the IELTS beforehand. Yeah. Now, one thing to note is that if a student would like to go for undergraduate and they've studied in either the IB curriculum or the Cambridge curriculum, they don't yeah. usually have they provide IELTS to us. We have waivers for them, basis their their scores and their academics. Okay, yep. so, so could you, uh, just to make it clear, because there are a lot of English medium schools in Bangladesh, and I believe you have already visited a couple of those, especially for the scholastic and the Aga Khan uh, during on a yep. last uh, last visit, as you say to me. So could you please tell me, like those students are from those schools? their educations are from the British curriculum, Cambridge or the Edexo. So do you think that they need their IELTS score for their undergraduate program especially, please? 
Usually they don't. We take it basis their scores in their O levels. Usually, I think for Cambridge, we just need a B four in English in their O levels, and for yeah. the uh, the international baccalaureate students, they need a five if they've done standard level English or a three if they've done the higher level English. So for those students, they don't actually need to look into getting their IELTS. We will take it on their school scores. For students okay. who have studied somewhere else overseas first, maybe they did a bachelor's degree or uh, another master's in the UK or US or Canada yeah. or Australia, we are also able to give English exemptions to them on the basis of their overseas yeah. study. That's yeah. usually the only exemption we give at postgraduate level. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Because uh, what happened in Bangladesh the last year, we sent you a student in New Zealand. They have done their bachelor's in law and the master's in law from the University of London, under the University of London. And uh, uh, and, and the, the, their medium of instruction was in English and they don't record the IELTS. So it's the same for you, I believe, right? Yes, exactly the same. If you've done at least one year study in UK, Canada, Australia, US, then you won't have to give up IELTS to us. You just provide your overseas qualification as the um, basically the document that we need for that. Okay. On the other hand, because the, for your kind information, like in Bangladesh, there are a lot of law schools. Like they give us the, like external English, uh, external law program from the uh, University of London external programs. And then uh, all the education is go through uh, medium of instruction was in English and they appear uh, for the examination at the British councils and they have the letters from the university and they are graduate from the, under the University of uh, London. So I believe they don't need the ILTS for the LNM program at the university too. I would I would need to check with my admissions department, given that it's an offshore campus. It's possible that there could be a waiver in the circumstances, but I'll just have to double check that information. Okay, thank you so much. So there is a question is come up from the Iqbal uh, Jalali. Is there any agricultural subject? He completed in agriculture after his secondary school certificate. 2018 and uh, it was a four year diploma. Now uh, he's looking for enroll in the bachelor program while his IELTS score is 6.0. I believe that he's the current student, he's a regular student, and that he got a uh, good IELTS score too. What could be your advice, Andra? Yeah, so we as a university don't have agriculture, but there are two universities in New Zealand that are very well known for their agriculture programs, which is Lincoln University and Massey University. So yeah. I would encourage you to have a look at the bachelor's degrees that they offer because they are very well um, respected and recognized internationally in those areas. Thank you so much. So Mr. Uh uh, Iqbal Jaladi, thank you so much for your good question. So I will humbly request you please communicate with us with your own academic credentials and uh, we are more than happy to serve you. And and I believe that the, you get your answer, though the Victoria University of Wellington, they don't have the agriculture faculty, but as she said, that the Lincoln University and the Massey University, they are well known for the agricultural faculty. So we are more than happy to help you. So there are a lot of questions coming up with you, but it's about the one hour that we continue our Facebook live session. So uh, we are about to finish. So I'll be requesting to uh, Mr. Ritu to come on board. So we'll be discussing a little bit uh, more details uh, for our uh, for the notification for our students. So uh, if I come back to you, Andrea, do you have any message for our students? Yeah, so I mean, my message would be that if you would like any type of advice on what type of uh, a program is correct uh, for you, then please do get in touch with uh, with Mr. Rahman. He can put you in touch with me, and I'm very happy to make specialized recommendations as well based on your profile, which of our programs I think would be best for you. It's a fantastic place for study. It's a very welcoming place. Uh, Wellington as a city is very multicultural with about 25% of the population born overseas. So it's a great place to live. It's a great place to study. It's a great place to then start your career as well after. Okay, so Ms. Ritu, would you like to add some more point here, please? Um, as I was saying during the beginning, you know, that uh, aim for good universities, you have choices and options available. It's just that you need to 
make yourself more knowledgeable so that you can make the right decision and uh, you have uh, uh, mr mashur here who can help you with that they are really good uh, with the kind of a knowledge they have the kind of a universities they are you know helping students to get in try and do that you know that is going to help you a lot so so that's my suggestion to all the students who looking to study in new zealand okay so প্রিয় শিক্ষার্থী বন্ধুরা এতক্ষণ আমাদের সঙ্গে থাকার জন্য আপনাদেরকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ এবং আপনারা জেনে নিতে পারলেন নিউজিল্যান্ড উচ্চ শিক্ষা সম্পর্কিত বিস্তারিত ইনফরমেশন আগামীতে নতুন কোন ফেসবুক লাইভ সেশনে অবশ্যই আপনাদের সামনে দেখা হবে সেই পর্যন্ত আপনারা সবাই ভালো থাকবেন এবং সুস্থ থাকবেন এবং আমাদের জন্য দোয়া করবেন আমরা চাই যে এই প্যান্ডেমিক সিচুয়েশনে যারা আপনারা ঘরে বসে আছেন তাদেরকে সঠিক এবং ট্রান্সপারেন্ট ইনফরমেশন দেওয়ার জন্য শুধু শেষে একটি কথা বলতে চাই দ্য নিউজিল্যান্ড প্রোভাইড দ্য কোয়ালিটি এডুকেশন উইথ ইন্টারন্যাশনাল রিকগনাইজেশন উইথ এন অ্যাফোর্ডেবল টিউশন ফেস আই হ্যাভ ভিজিটেড নিউজিল্যান্ড সেভারাল টাইম এন্ড আই হ্যাভ ভিজিটেড লট অফ আদার্স কান্ট্রি ইন দিস বিউটিফুল ওয়ার্ল্ড বাট টু বি অনেস্ট উইথ ইউ নিউজিল্যান্ড ইজ আ কমপ্লিটলি डिफरेंट ইফ ইউ থিং কম্পেয়ার টু আদার্স কান্ট্রি দ্য কান্ট্রি সাইজ অফ দ্য নিউজিল্যান্ড ইজ আ মাচ মোর সিমিলার সাইজ ইন টার্মস অফ জাপান ইফ ইউ থিংস अबाउट দ্য ল্যান্ড সাইজ ইজ আ ভেরি মাচ সিমিলার Uh, in terms of united kingdom a lot of students are thinking for the weather i must say that the weather is really really lovely is almost like bangladesh but it's not that much hot but it's always in everdeen i must say because the, i visited the auckland to wellington taranga and the hastings and i found that the this place are really really nice and the beautiful and the new zealander are most warm and welcoming so this is really really good because uh, whenever you will be planning for studying abroad definitely you need to know about it and uh, as the mr andres said that the new zealand got only eight public university and there are no private establishment in terms of the university and the, all the eight university under the top 3% uh, world ranked university in this beautiful world and obviously har university is the victoria university of wellington is the top 2% university in this beautiful world so in terms of the quality of education reasonable tuition with sustainability during in the study between the work opportunity and after completing your education to get some real life working experience as a, such a kind of international environment new zealand give us everything it's like a complete package so if you're really really interested please come and talk to us we are more than happy to service so priyo shikkhatira eto kon amader shonge thakar jonno apnader ke oshongho dhonnobad agami to notun kono facebook live session e obosshoi apnader shamne dekha hobe shei porjonto apnara shobai bhalo thakben shusto thakben assalamu alaikum